Today's reading is a couple different verses, and it has to do with Mother's Day. And God has, in His wisdom and in His power, God has ordained mothers and fathers to be the bedrock, to be the center of the family structure that God has created. And so the biblical role of mothers in that bedrock foundation is one that's been under attack for a while now, quite, quite frankly, since the 1960s and even before that. It's even looked down upon by the worldly society that we live in as kind of a, a secondary thing, as a, oh, only silly bumpkins do this kind of thing. That's not, that's not how real women are. That's not, you know, there's no value in a stay-at-home mom. There's no value in women trying to live out scripturally their role as a mother or a grandmother. But nothing could be further from the truth. I just want to read something that Charles Spurgeon said many years ago, but it's very, well, it's perfect for today. He says this, Oh, dear mothers, you have a very sacred trust in, put into you by God. He has, in effect, said to you, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. You are called to equip the future man of God that he may be thoroughly furnished into every good work. And if God spares you, you may even live to hear that pretty boy speak to thousands and you will have the sweet reflection in your heart that the quiet teachings of the nursery led the man to love his God and serve him. Those who think that a woman detained at home by her little family, that she is doing nothing, think the reverse of what is true. Scarcely can the godly mother quit her home for a place of worship, but dream not that she is lost to the work of the church. Far from it. She is doing the best possible service to God. Mothers, the godly training of your offspring is your first and most pressing duty. Isn't that beautiful? That is truth. That is truth that's rooted in Scripture. Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 and 7, speaks of the job of parents, like a mother, training up their children. Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 and 7 says this, These words that I commanded you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. In other words, God's word and how to live for the Lord is what's always on your lips. It's what you're always talking about. If you were to sit down and make a pie graph of all the different conversations that you have with your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren, the biggest slice of that pie by far should be conversation about God, Jesus Christ, and his word that speaks of him. That's what it's saying, that God's word should be on your heart. You shall teach them, your children, diligently. Talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down. Whatever you're doing, in other words, that's what your job is, is to teach your children. Proverbs 1, verse 8. Proverbs is always known as the book of wisdom. Proverbs 1, verse 8 says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching. Moms have such an impressive, important role in God's ordained plan. No mother who is trying to serve the Lord in this way should ever feel ashamed or lesser by no means, because there is no greater calling for a woman than to do this. When a mother does these very things, she brings honor to God, and she brings honor to herself too by what happens through what she's doing to serve God and honor him. The lives of her children and her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren will not only bring honor to God as well, but honor to her. There are many blessings that flow through a godly 
mother. Ephesians 6, with all this in mind, Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, for this is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. That's what we do today and what's what we should do every day. In the same way that we say, look, Sunday is the Lord's day. And we worship him and we gather and we remember what, who he is and what he's done for us on Sunday, the Lord's Day. But truly, we should be doing that every single day. We should be honoring God every single day. Every single day is the Lord's Day for those whom he has saved. In the same way, when we honor our mothers on Mother's Day, that's great. But also, we should be doing that every day. God says in Ephesians 6 that we should obey our parents. That's the do this God says, do this, obey your parents. Okay, we do it because that's what God says, and he knows best. His way is better than our way. And then he says, have this mind in you as you do this. Honor your parents, honor your mother. Not just on Mother's Day, but every day. Honor her position that God has put her in and ordained her into as the teacher have that attitude of honor when you're doing this. So it says, obey your parents, but have this attitude, which is to honor them while you're obeying them. And you do it because you love God. And you understand that he is far wiser than we are and that his way is better than our way. But we also know that we get this special promise if you do that. When I obey the Lord, many blessings come out of that. And one of these things is like what he promises here. The first commandment dealing with relationships and with, with others and with the family promises that if we do this, because that's what Paul's doing. He's, he's reaching back to the Ten Commandments, saying, honor thy father and thy mother. And he's saying that if you do that, things will go well with you and you will live long in the land. There's a special blessing there to that. So let's thank God for the gift of mothers and let us lift up that godly role God has made for them, and encourage one another. Husbands, encourage your wives who are mothers. Children, encourage your mothers, encourage your grandmothers. Thank them, honor them, and in so doing, honor God. When a mother does these things, it honors God and brings honor to her too, and many blessings flow through a godly mother. Please join me in prayer as we pray for all of you moms and grandmoms and great-grandmoms, your relationships with your husbands, which are the bedrock of the family structure and is an example to those who come after you. It's not just important to pray for mothers and their children or fathers and their children. It's vital that we pray for husbands and wives who are the example to their children and their children's children. And let us pray for those children, which are a heritage of the Lord. Father, we come to you today on this Mother's Day to thank you for our mothers. Whether we had good mothers, bad mothers, godly mothers, Lord, you have blessed us in many ways through them. We thank you that even if we don't have a mother that we're close to, that we have a heavenly father. But today we ask that, that you help us to honor our mothers, that you help us to be there for them, that you help us to encourage and honor mothers who strive to live godly lives according to your word and strive to have godly marriages with their husbands so that they have a godly example for their children and grandchildren, that you would bless those marriages, that you would bless the children that come out of those marriages, that you would bless the children that come out of the children that come out of those marriages. Lord, that you would encourage obedience to your ordained plan for the family, that you would help us to encourage one another as brothers and sisters in the Lord to have the right attitude of honoring our parents for your sake and help us to encourage one another with God's wonderful promise that things will go well for us when we abide in your word and do what it says. Help godly mothers to train up younger mothers in the way they should go and help the younger mothers and those who you have chosen to to not be mothers but to be loving daughters 
Help them to be encouragers of their mothers. There's so much, Lord, that we need your help with. We're not good sons. We're not good daughters like we should be sometimes, many times. So please help us to, to honor our mothers and help us to honor you and glorify you in doing that. And bless the mothers that are in this church body, Father. Lead them in your way everlasting. Give them the strength and the encouragement and the support that they need from your Holy Spirit, from your word, and from those whom you've put around them. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together this morning.